Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Please subscribe if you haven't yet already. There's a red button beneath me somewhere and if you click on that, you'll be subscribed to my channel. There's also a white bell next to that. And if you click on that, you'll get an alert every time I upload new content, which would be awesome. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. That would make me very happy. Today's video is the third in a series, making my, my face up, making my face up, with autumnal kind of colors. Today I'm going to be using the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette, what I did here, and I'm talking today about Stranger Things, the third episode in season two, Polywog. So if you'd like to see how I got this look and hear a little bit of my feelings about the episode of Polywog, please keep watching. All right, I've already moisturized. I've already Urban Decay all nighter setting sprayed. I'm gonna go in with my MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in Painterly. So we pick up where we left off in Trek or Treat Freak where Dustin is opening up the trash can and he puts it in his, in his ghost trap. And his mom's really cute and Gat Matarazzo is just so, I, I really like him. He's, he's funny, but he also can be serious. But I think he's really good at, at humor. So, and his mom's really cute. Uh, how is that? How is what? The greatest night of the year, of course. Like, she really knows him. I'm going to go all over with air just to kind of dry this down a little bit. And Muse is hissing, which reminded me of Cat's Eye. Again, a lot of, they do a lot of Stephen King. They allude to a lot of Stephen King and they refer to a lot of Stephen King. And that one definitely made me think about Cat's Eye. I'll bring you in a little bit closer as I kind of begin to work on my eyes. I'm going to go in with a diffused, this is a Sigma diffused crease brush, E38. And I'm going to go in with Princess. Then he displaces Yertle. And we start seeing him for the first time. The music is, is interesting. The music that is playing during that sequence kind of suggests that everything's okay. Which is weird because it seems to me like it's not okay kind of from the jump. Because, because they live in Hawkins and that can't be okay, right? Even though he doesn't know what came out of Will, it just seems weird. Then we have the flashback of Eleven in the Woods and kind of the Ego delivery system. I'm gonna go in with the same brush with Empress and I'm going to really try to tap that off before I put it on because I don't want to get it too dark, but I do want some warmth. So yeah, we see the Ego delivery system and the and then and then we're back in the present and he's made this post Halloween ego tower and it's it's hard because he's keeping her safe it's clear that he's keeping her safe but it's also clear that she feels trapped and she's very isolated and we learn that Hopper knows we see him look at the cord and he knows that she is visiting him he says you visited him again last night so He's noticed this before, but we're seeing it for the first time. And then Eleven really starts to wig out, like, when is soon? And this kind of reminded me of Firestarter, of not the fire starting, but of the, the telekinetic nature of the Drew Barrymore character in Firestarter. And she's just, friends don't lie, and when is soon? And I just, I just don't know what the answer is. She is not happy. I'm gonna go in with a more tapered, blending brush and ladyship. And I'm going to tap this off. And then we are in the library, the public library, not the high school library that we saw Nansen in the last episode. And he needs books, but he already has five books checked out. And he says that he's on a curiosity voyage and he needs his, his paddles to travel. His paddles are his books. He's, uh, he's hungry for the learning. And I just, I love, I love, what Gatton Matarazzo is doing this season. Then we're back with Bob and Joyce. Bob has spent the night and Jonathan does not seem happy about it. And then we get the ride to school. And I'm gonna start with your majesty in the inner corner and then I'm gonna work my way out with Royal Highness and Noblewoman. So he is, Bob is driving Will to school and he tells his story of Mr. Baldo the Clown, which is terrifying. Clowns are, clowns terrify me. And that he used to have dreams about him too. And that one time he 
just stood his ground and said, go away. And Mr. Baldo never came back. And it's not the same, obviously, because what's happening for Will is real. But, I mean, he means well. And it's nice that he's trying. And, I mean, it wouldn't hurt for him to try that, although he does try it. Spoiler alert for later in the episode. It doesn't work, but it's nice that he is is trying. I did notice that the sound was really good in this scene. I'm now going to flip the brush over and go into Royal Highness and hit that in the middle and move it out a little bit. And the sound is really interesting. They, they lower the sound when, like the music in the car, when they're talking. And all you can really hear is his voice. You can't hear like any ambient noise outside and you can't hear the music or anything. So I really like what they did with the sound in this scene. And I mean, we know now because we've seen the episode, but it wasn't a terrible idea. It wasn't a terrible piece of advice. Obviously, there's no way that he could have known that it was actually happening. Now I'm gonna flip it over one more time and I'm gonna hit kind of the outer third of my eye, maybe even more than that, with Noble Woman. Because the idea is to give myself an autumnal look. Then we are back at school and Max is talking to Lucas. She doesn't know any of Dustin's history, which makes sense. If it was happening today, she would know about it because of the internet. But there's nothing. I'm going to go back in with Royal Highness over here, and then I'm going to blend a little bit more. So just going to blend these a little. In today's world, I'm sure she would have known about that before, before she got to town. Not about everything, but about as much as the newspapers were printing. I go back in with this kind of tapered blending brush and I'm gonna go back in with Ladyship just to clean this up a little bit, deepen it, blend it a little bit. But she doesn't know really what's happened and she's talking to Lucas about it and about his nickname Zombie Boy and there's just something he's, it's clear to her and it's clear to us obviously because we know what happened last season but there's something that she's not telling him. He's not telling her and she's curious. I'm gonna back you out a little bit gonna speed you through my eyes. I'm using my Inglot gel liner number, number 77 and I'm using a Delium Tools number 706. I'm always on the hunt for the, the best kind of small, you can hardly even see it, the best small tipped eyeliner brush. This is my first go at this so we'll see what my first impression is of this one. All right, fast forwarding you through this. I like that brush a lot, actually. Keep using it and see if it continues to live up to my first impressions, but that was really good. It's a very fine pointed, and the, the tip is very fine, and the bristles are pretty firm. Sometimes when you get a, a long brush, sometimes with a long brush, the bristles are too floppy. That was really good. Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer, then, we are in class and Mr. Clark is talking about Phineas Gage, which is such a fascinating story and relevant. I'm going to use the Milk Cooling Under Eye Gel. I did buy the big one in the VIB sale at Sephora, but I'm just going to keep using this because there's a lot in here actually. And Mr. Clark says that his friend started referring to him as no longer Gage, which just seems like he's talking about Will. Not that he's talking about Will, but that that's what we're seeing in Will. And it's also when Dustin comes into class with his ghost trap, comes in late and is comic relief and has his ghost trap and he's arranging for everyone to be in the AV club at lunch. And I think this is the scene where Max is staring at Will, Will's in front of her and he kind of feels her staring at him and turns around and, and catches her. Hourglass, Vanish Foundation, and Light. Then Hopper is still investigating the pumpkins and he is mapping out locations and he sees that the locations are all around Hawkins' lab. But he doesn't tell anything to his officers, he just leaves and doesn't really tell them what he's doing. So it seems like he's you know, keeping things secret, which we find a little bit more out later. 
Then we're back at Hopper's cabin and we get a flashback of the first day in the cabin. And it was his grandfather's place and it's isolated. And if it wasn't Hopper, if it was somebody else, it would be really creepy and a little predatory, but I trust Hopper 100%. And we see the box that he moves with Sarah's name on it. And he's not trying to be Eleven's dad, but it's clear that he's still working through some stuff with respect to having lost his daughter. Laura Mercier secret brightening powder under my eyes. And also when we get the montage of them kind of cleaning everything up with the Jim Croce don't mess around with Jim, which was so awesome. And it's a really nice montage of this place becoming a home for them. Teaching her how to sweep and stocking the fridge or the freezer with egos and teaching her Morse code, which is pretty cool. And what we saw before when she was receiving messages from him. Anastasia, brow is in dark brown. And then we get the don't be stupid rules. And they are always keep the curtains drawn, which she opens. She also opened it when she heard the squirrel. Always keep the curtains drawn. Only open the door if Hopper gives his secret knock. Oh, and they also have set everything up outside, the booby traps with the bullets and stuff. And never ever go outside alone, especially during the day, which is exactly what she does. And she does it to, the music on this show is so good. I was really afraid it was gonna be a Michael Jackson heavy season. Got some issues with him. Used to like him a lot when I was a kid, but it's hard for me to listen to him now. And it would be really hard for me to listen to him on this show because of all the kids. So I'm glad that we're getting not just thriller this season, but Tones on Tail, go, just made me so happy. So she's going and yeah, she is, she is leaving. I do not know what it would be like to be 11 and to be like pubescent. I just can't even imagine what it would be like to have these superpowers and, and be in this kind of really intensely shifting hormonal kind of time in your life where you don't, you don't have any, any kind of female role model modeling anything for you and telling you anything. And then we're in high school and we're playing basketball or Billy's playing basketball with Steve and Billy's really good. The, ki the guy who plays it is, I forget what his name is. It's an Irish kind of name. I'll put it up on the screen. I think that it's that guy playing basketball, which is interesting because he is Australian. And, but I can't imagine they would have had a body double and it looks like you can see his face. So I wonder if it's actually this guy playing basketball, which is really intense. And it's interesting what this kid has done among other things, in addition to kind of just giving us, I don't know, something else to worry about and giving us kind of a different, a different character. We're also being given this really interesting foil for Steve. Steve was a giant, just terrible guy. Not terrible, well, he was a little terrible. Actually, he was a little terrible with the pressuring and the, but he, he became someone that we trusted, but he was definitely not someone we were rooting for. And it's interesting because now with Billy, we're kind of rooting for, not rooting for Steve, but not, I'm not rooting for Steve in terms of Steve versus Jonathan and Nancy, but I am definitely rooting for Steve opposite Billy. Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Prosecco Pop. So then Nance comes in, yeah, and takes him outside. And I, there have to be better ways to do this, I think. Like not, not in the middle of school. I, don't, I think they're on a team together. Maybe not, maybe it's just practice, but, or PE or something. But she pulls him out and he talks about their conversation. And she's basically saying she was drunk and blah, blah, blah. And he's saying, as it's true, that, you know, the things that we say when we're drunk often are, you know, really how we feel. And he wants her to say that she loves him and she can't say it. And I'm not rooting for them to be together, but I am rooting for him to have nice things happen. Cause he's, I think he's grown a lot. And I don't think that he and Nance are right together. I think they would ultimately end up making each other miserable and wouldn't wouldn't be healthy for each other. But I don't think he's a bad guy and I think he deserves good things. So I'm rooting for him to have good things. All right, then we're back at school, it was middle school. We were at school before we were at high school. Now we're in middle school. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury feline flick to just clean up some of the areas that my eyelash curler cleared away. Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish. Zooming through my lips, I'm going to use my Kiko 305 liner and Kat Von Dino Sparatu. This is one of the ones that I got in like the 
10 maybe there are, are there's a big sampler at sephora this holiday season and i got that so that's in this i'll see you on the other side of this That's dark. All right. Then we're back at the middle school and they go to the AV club to look at D'Artagnan. It's interesting because if you look at Mike, I would think that he would immediately have a, a visceral reaction. I would even kind of think he would have known about it in science class, but whole conversation about polywog and tadpoles and, and that he's going to name this new creature. And Dustin does seem really connected to him. I'm not clear on why that is. We'll see that in just a, uh, just a second. Then they're leaving and we have, we see Will having a flashback of throwing up the flash, the, um, the polywog, the thing at the end of the first season. Then we're back with Bob and Joyce and Bob is having lunch with her and he tells her that there was some video in the camera showing some boys that were bullying Will and Joyce is not having it. Then we're back at Hawkins and Hopper is talking to Dr. Owens. Dr. Owens is really annoying and is not taking responsibility for any of this, sounds like. And Hopper says, I keep things nice and quiet for you and you keep your shit out of my town. That's the deal, I've done my part. Now, now you do yours, convince me. And that's probably why he's not telling the other police officers about this. It seems like it's on the DL. But, oh, and then Owens tells Hopper that the last, the last burn was two days ago. And so that explains the hazmat suit burning thing that we saw the other day. Then we see Nancy and Jonathan in the parking lot and she is admitting that she actually meant what she said to Steve drunkenly and feelings and connection. But then they start talking about Hawkins Lab and Barb and Will's disappearance and 11. And then there's a guy who's playing, not a Walkman, because he doesn't have headphones in, but he's playing like a handheld recorder. And she has this epiphany that she's going to get a tape recorder and record things. They decide to skip fourth period together and they go to Radio Shack. Then Eleven is on a walk and we see a flashback. I'm not sure what he's reading her, but he says to her, she says, she asks if she has a mother and he says, of course. And when she starts asking more questions, he says she's not around anymore, which is not really a lie. It, he didn't say she's dead. He said she's not around anymore and that is not untrue. And she's with these, this mother and child, which makes me think about, she probably is thinking about mothers and daughters on these swings. And she makes the swing go around psychically and she asks where school is and, and then she heads towards school. Then Dark gets away conversation about true sight. Dustin does not want to turn Dart over to the authorities, which is just weird because it seems it seems like Dart is connected to Dustin and Dustin is connected to Dart. And I'm not clear on what that, what that means. And then he grows, yeah, and makes a run for it. Dart, not Dustin. Then Joyce is watching the videotape. She sees Will be bullied. And when he drops the camera, she sees him be out, kind of be knocked out. And then also one of the coolest things is when she starts to see like static on the TV and she brings over the like paper and does a sketch over what she sees on the TV and it's a match for what Will has drawn. So she sees it. Just interesting that it's picking up on whatever's happening on, on camera. Nancy calls Mrs. Holland, Barb's mom, and agrees to meet at Forest Hills Park the next morning and she knows that her phones are tapped. They said, I feel like at some point, I feel like at some point we heard that their phones were tapped. And I think that she knows that, that when she goes to this park, she's going to, the people from Hawkins are gonna be there. They're gonna know. Then Hopper gets a call about a girl, the girl who was with the mother and child when she made the swing go around really quickly. And he realizes that Eleven has, has escaped and he leaves, but doesn't tell anybody anything. Then we're at school with Eleven, oh Eleven, and she is in, she's looking into the multi-purpose room when Max is skateboarding around Mike. And if you look at the expressions on their faces, it's, it looks like she's kind of smiling at him and he's kind of smiling at her. It's not what's happening, they're just kind of establishing 
a friendship, kind of, but obviously that's not the way that Eleven sees it and she freaks out and kind of pulls the skateboard out from under Max and the way that she describes it as like a magnet pulling the board out from under her doesn't, you know, I think she says something about, I know that sounds crazy, but it sounded like a magnet pulled it. And it's obvious to Mike that Eleven's somewhere around, but he can't find her. Then the kids are trying to find Dart and Dart's in the bathroom, but Dustin puts him under his hat. And I'm just still unclear about why he feels so connected. And so he keeps saying he feels responsible for it, like it's a, a pet, but it feels like there's, to me, like there's something more happening. Like it's somehow psychically connected to him or somehow connected to him. Joyce calls the school and Will is still, Will's in the school and the, the monster's coming after him. It looks kind of like the monster in Lost, the smoke monster. And it even sounds like it kind of like coming down the halls after him. And Will decides to take Bob's advice and starts yelling at it to go away. Yelling, 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 go away, go away. And when he stops and starts yelling at it to go away, the monster seems to just take over him like tendrils like going into his nose and into his mouth. And there's also the audio of the car ride with Bob and with Mr. Baldo. And the episode ends with Sean Astin with Bob saying, just like that. And he snaps and that's how it ends. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I, I loved this episode and I, I cannot wait to see where it's going. I, I am, it's obvious that Dart's gonna be growing and it's probably gonna become a problem. And I hope that Dustin finds that out soon, but I don't know. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I am really, really, really having fun doing this, getting an excuse to really dig into these episodes. A lot to do on YouTube, a lot to do in the world, and I really appreciate the time that you took to spend with me today. Take care and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.